Hello everybody, it's Doc here from OnTheMoneyOptions.com. Today we're going to start talking about how the major stock indexes can be manipulated. Now I'm not talking about illegal stock man manipulation, but let me explain what goes on every day right under your nose. First, let's set the stage. The world stock markets are made up of trillions of dollars and millions of traders, a virtual river of money. Billions of dollars and millions of shares of stock trade every day. Most retail investors are looking for a good stock and a good record in which to invest. But what if you had billions of dollars to invest? You know that your buying and selling can create pressure on a stock's price just by your actions. So you learn how to cloak what you're doing so as not to hurt yourself when buying or selling a stock position. We will go over some of these methods, but first let's talk about how stock indexes are set up. Every day when you check the market, you probably look at two indices, the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500. The Dow Jones is made up of just 30 stocks. Charles Dow started the index in 1906 when the USA was heavily industrialized economy. He believed that monitoring the major industrial stocks was a good barometer of economic output for the economy. The S&P is made up of the 500 largest companies in the United States. This is a much broader index of stocks covering many different segments of our economy. The S&P 500 is subdivided into sectors. Recently, the S&P 500 was resegmented from nine sectors to 11. A sector is a group of stocks that have similar business characteristics. In order to understand how large traders can manipulate what you see, you must understand how the indices are constructed. The Dow and the S&P 500 are capital-weighted stock indexes. This means the stock's impact on the calculation of the index is based on the size of the company. The largest stocks receive the largest weight in the index. To make this example a little simpler, we'll look at an exchange-traded fund for the technology sector. This is a screenshot of the ETF XLK. This shows the top 10 holdings in the ETF and their weight in the calculation. There are 68 holdings in the XLK. If each stock received an equal weight in the calculation, each would contribute about 1.4%. But as you can see, Microsoft Corporation contributes 17.92%. This is roughly 12 times its equal share. The differential becomes the basis for our ability to manipulate the value of the indexes. Look at the weight of MSFT on the index. It carries the same amount of weight as the 43 smallest members of the index. For example, Microsoft could go up 1% in a trading session and the other 43 stocks could all go down 1% in the session and the index would remain the same. Using Microsoft, we can cloak what we're doing in the other 43 stocks in this example. Let's carry this a little further and look at the weighting impact of Microsoft to the components of the S&P 500. Microsoft has the same weight in the index as the cumulative weight of the 89 smallest components of the S&P 500. Remember, these are the largest 500 companies in the U.S. markets. We need this introduction to capital-weighted indexes to understand how the larger traders use this information to their advantage. In our next video, I'll show you how controlling the price of the top 10 stocks in the S&P 500 can completely cover up what we're doing with the other 490 stocks. In the next video, I'll show you how we set up the markets for a move down. By the time you see it coming, it's already done. So stay tuned for the next installment of Stock Market Manipulation. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my page so you don't miss another installment. So until next time, this is Doc saying so long, learn the rules, and stay hedged.